Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. Today I'm going to do rolled beads. Now this is not something that I typically do, but I'm going to give it a shot. I like making beads and have been made, I have been a bead maker for many years. But I recently got a box from Cindy Utter and in that box was this little thing right here. It says DIY Artful Paper Bead Kit by Jenny Belly. Jenny Belly is one of the people that I saw uh, paper beads being demonstrated that I really enjoyed. And then Shannon has Shannon Green has done them, and Janice May has done them. I mean, there are a million people doing beads. So inside this were two folded up pieces of paper that were um, colored printed strips that were printed out on the paper. This is two different sizes strips I put together. And then there were strips that were, you know, just straight strips that I cut apart. On the back of this, it tells you the instructions on how to do this, on how to roll the paper beads, what you need for them, so on and so forth. I don't need the instructions, but those of you who've never rolled beads before, you might need these instructions. Um, I. I don't roll, I, in the beginning I rolled beads with toothpicks. It says on here about using some kind of a cocktail stick, which is a toothpick in the UK. Um, so I really don't want to demonstrate a toothpick because honestly my hands cannot take rolling beads with toothpicks anymore. <laughs> uh, so if you don't have any kind of a stick, use something like a wooden skewer. The diameter on it is a little thicker than a toothpick. Might be a little easier to handle. For those of you who knit or crochet, use a knitting or a crochet hook, knitting needle or a crochet hook. Anything like that that's round and will let you slide it off the end can be used to roll beads with. You do not need to buy expensive equipment to do it, although I have because I found that my hands just can't take rolling the way they used to. All right, so let me show you what I got. When I started rolling or stopped rolling with toothpicks, I ordered bead rollers from a woman who made her own. And if I could remember her name, I would tell you. But I got these wooden, she takes wooden dowels and stains them. And then she inserts a metal piece Oops, sorry, metal piece inside. And these are all different diameters. So the holes on your beads are going to be, this one's really large. I think this one's, this is 3 16 of an inch for the hole. This one's 5 30 seconds. I cannot read what this one is. I don't know what this one is because I cannot read the handwriting. She did it with a marker. And it, or I did it with a marker. I don't remember, but it's just too, too blurry. But I like to use this one. This one is one of my favorite go-tos. Then there is five sixteenths of an inch, and this is one sixteenth of an inch. This is the smallest one. This is the smallest one I've got. It's very small. If you notice the length inside these, where the metal rods are inserted into the wood. Uh, you are limited to the width of the bead that you can use on these according to how long the rod is. These you can use, you can make larger size beads with. This one right here is very limited. It's probably shorter than the knuckle of your finger to the tip of your finger is shorter. She got this one in a little crooked, but that doesn't stop it from rolling perfectly fine. I just have to compensate for how it's in here a little bit crooked. So this one you can make very tiny little beads with, but the average size ones are the ones that are 5 16 of an inch, and this one's in here a tad crooked too, but like I said, it doesn't affect it at all. So the width of your bead, or the, yeah, the width of your bead is limited to how long the surface is that you have to roll on them. All right, so I ordered these first, and I've been using these for many years, and I love them. She sent along a uh, free bead paper with them when I got it. You, got, you get a lot for what you paid for for this. 
Then I ordered these that have rubber, and then it's some kind of hair thing. I don't know. There, it's a rubber. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It just goes over the end of the wood, and these are marked on here, but I can't. All right, so this is the fattest one. Sorry, this is the fattest one. Then this one. And again, you're limited by how much rod you have to use to work on. Then this one. Then the orange one. And then this one. That's the smallest one. And I used to be able to tell you what size these things are, but I can't. There's nothing written on them. Only her brand name says C5 on it. C5 Creations. And then, let, I forgot to bring one more set over here. Let me go get the other set of bead rollers that I have that I really like. Okay, these bead rollers are my favorite ones because... They're a whole different kind of bead roller than what I'm used to. Uh, let's see. I have another bead roller I'll show you in a second that's a little a little odd if I can find it on my spinning cart. All right, so these are different kind of bead rollers. These are split bead rollers, but they come with a little tiny bag of brown beads. There's instructions inside the box. And it tells you how to use your bead rollers. There's instructions and it shows you the different sizes that she makes and sells. And each little set of rollers or whatever you buy comes with the bag of, I guess what she's called, paper stoppers. What does she call them? Paper bead roller. I can't find it on here what she calls these things. Anyway, so they stop your paper from coming off the end of the roller, which I thought was very, very cool. This is, if you want to find this, I will put the link down below in the description box. The lady's name is Julie A., and I think she pronounces her last name Bullduck. I got this from her Etsy store. All these, these bead rollers that I've gotten come from an Etsy store. Okay, so let me show you how this works. Look how long these are compared to the other ones. They're huge. Look at this. Look at that. Like there. You see that? Look how long they are compared to the compared to the others. All right. So, that's why I really like these because if you want to make a make a wide honking bead, that's fabulous. You can because these are split. They oh, you can you don't want to open them up cuz you'll stretch them out, but there there's a they go completely through. Oh, let me show you. Come on, go on, go on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, see, now it's not going to do it. <laughs> All right, so let's go through the middle. See, it goes, you can slide the paper back and forth, up and down. All right. So then she sends you a, a very, this is, I, I think this is the tiniest little Ziploc bag I've ever seen in my life. That thing's so cute. All right, so then you get beads that the diameter of the inside of the bead will fit on the end of this. And if you don't want your paper to slide off or you're trying to keep it even, you take this little bead and you slip it in over the end of the, the metal rolling part. So you can slip it down or you can make it go way out to the end. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna show you how to roll on these different rollers so you understand how it works. And I don't want, let me put this on the end of my roller here because I don't want to lose that little bead. I hate having to lose stuff. I hate leaving it and then having to go find more. All right, so let's try, let's roll. Uh, what you need for this is scissors if you have to cut paper out. You can use a paper cutter, you can use scissors, whatever you're most comfortable with. It is much easier to use a paper cutter if you're going to cut stuff in strips because it makes the lines more smooth and more even. It's a little more difficult with a paper cutter with things that 
are pointed and graduate down to nothing. And these are two sizes of beads. There's really long ones and short ones. So let's start with the plain ones first. I clip them together so I can keep track of them. All right, now Jenny Belly's stuff has, each one of them has a woman's face on the end of the bead. So that means you roll, start with the roll on the opposite end because you want to end up with this woman's face at the end of your bead. So I don't think I want really fat beads. Let me start with the oldest set that I have first. What do I want to start with? Let's do, this one is 5 sixteenths of an inch. Now you can roll away from you like this, or you can roll towards you, whatever you're most comfortable with. I'm most comfortable rolling away from me. So what I do is I insert, now this, is a different kind of roller because the paper, let me go down further. The paper does not go through. This is only a slit. This metal piece is not split in half. It's only a slit. So you slide your paper on there and you can do it all the way to the end or you can do it in the middle. I don't want to slide it all the way to the end because this one's crooked. And then you just twirl. And as you're doing it, you need to make sure and go slowly because if you're a beginner, you need to go slow. I usually go pretty fast because I've been doing this for a long time. You want to make sure that your bead stays as even as possible, meaning you don't want a lot hanging off here or too much sliding down on the end. So try to make sure you line it up as best you can. And if you don't, I'll show you the trick on how to fix it later. So you just roll and roll and you use a little bit of tension because it makes it easier to roll if you keep a little tension on what you're rolling. And you just keep going. Now Jenny Belly stuff was folded up and there's a crease right there. Where am I going here? There's a crease right there but it's not going to matter because it's going to be covered up. And there you go. See you can't even tell. And I don't think I did a very good job, job cutting this out because I can see a little bit of white there. All right, so at the end, you have the lady's face. The whole point of this is having the woman's face on the end. You take this and you slide out your bead roller. Look what happened. It was in there tight, so it peeled it out. So you take this and you squish it down. And the best way to do this is take a flat hard surface and stick your bead on the flat hard surface and then push down with your finger and kind of wiggle it around so that you're flat here and you're flat here. Then all you do is take a little bit of glue and don't get crazy with the glue otherwise your beads will be filthy. Take my word for it. I've learned the hard way. And if you'd like something like a little toothpick or that kind of thing, you can smooth the glue out on the end with a toothpick. I just use my finger. They wash. Didn't have to buy any extras. And just kind of wipe the glue away as best you can. Try not to leave too much glue on the bead because it does, if you keep rubbing it, it will either make a pill on the paper or it will leave a dirty mark on your bead. So there is the face on Jenny Belly's bead and the, the bead is on the end. Cool? Very simple flat bead. One of the most simple beads there are to roll. So you're flat here, got a nice hole. Flat there, still a nice hole. And it's glued and you can roll it to make sure. Now, if you don't want to see the white, you can take some kind of a marker or paint and paint it on either end. And that'll cover up the white. If you don't like the white, I don't really care. So there's the face from one of Jenny Belly's, whoops, this way, one of Jenny Belly's bead kits. All right, so there's that one. All right, so now I'm going to do a different kind of bead. One of the ones that's a short one here. Let's get a short one here. This is one, is this one of the shorter ones? No. Oh, the ones in the, well, I don't know. Maybe they're all about the same size. All right, so let's try to roll this one right here. And I'm just gonna clip these back together. 
And the cool thing about the clips is, is that if you have some kind of a storage system where there's a, um, well, I have a pegboard system, so I have the pegboard pieces that stick out. You can just slide, pull one of these down and slide this onto the rod on the pegboard and hang these up. It's super duper simple to store them. Just put one down and then hang them on the rod and that way they don't take up so much pay space. You don't have to put them in a drawer. If you're somebody who reaches for beads every day, hanging them up on the rod's a nice system. All right, so X one fell out, Ooh, two fell out. Let's do the green one. All right, so here we have this one. Now this is tapered, all right? When people tell you the size of the beads, what they're doing is they're telling you what the end of the bead is. They're saying I make a one inch bead. That means that they're starting with one inch here. So this is a one half, three quarter inch bead. So it's three quarters of an inch from here to here. And it's gonna make a more rounded bead. All right, so I'm gonna show you on these that have the padding, the smallest one. This also does not go all the way through. It's the, the kind where it only just, you just slide this right on. And you use your fingers on this because this is supposed to help cushion. For those of you who have arthritis or hand problems, hand issues, this is a great, a, a, a great one. And what, what happens is the end of your hand rolls against the wood here. And if that irritates you, you'll need to find some other kind of cushion thing. Mm. Okay, so what we have here. And I can see I'm already out of alignment because I've been talking, not paying attention. It's okay. This bead here is not like the square bead. Let me undo this so I can explain this better. You are going down in a graduated size. So you want to make sure that you can see the ends. Do I need to go closer? Yeah. So you can see the ends. You see the white where I didn't cut it quite straight, it's okay. And what you're doing, you're trying to center this end with this set and this end with this set. So you're trying to center the two ends so they stay in the middle of rolling. This is a little tricky. Some of them turn out better than others. It's okay. The cool thing about making beads is everyone is different. Once you get more practice at it, your beads will all start to look the same. They'll be more uniform. All the sizes that you make, um, you have a size preference for the holes. See how you can see that it's roll, rolling up and you can see the ends and then you can see the ends. And you want to keep the paper in the middle. So you're rolling. Make sure you keep it. And again, so you can slide this. If you're getting too far this way, you can bring it on back. Well, this way, bring it on back. And keeping a little tension is good. You can roll it on your finger or you can stretch it out. Whichever way you're most comfortable. Everybody rolls differently. So I keep rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. To the very end, and this is super duper skinny end. So you need like a hair's breadth of glue. You don't need a ton of glue when you do stuff like this. I use um, Aileen's Tacky Glue. You take this in your finger like this and I've changed directions. So what I do is I roll the bead and I roll the glue and as I'm rolling it is gluing all the way in the middle. You want to, don't want to do this too long because you'll get a dirty bead. Alright, so there is And then you can kind of mash it to make sure the end is lovely. And there you go, there's a bead. As opposed to this one. Let me measure this one for you. I think this is probably a one inch bead, uh, just shy of one inch. She uses the metric system in the UK, so it's an eighth of an inch shy of one inch. So it's what? 15 sixteenths of an inch long. Sorry about the blurry, the camera takes a few minutes. So it's goes to right there. 
So it's just a hair shy of one inch, which is fine. So there are two different kinds of beads with two different kinds of rollers. All right, now I'm gonna show you the one that has the bead on the end. All right, so we'll do one of these that's flat with, the, with these. And I'm gonna do the thin one. I like I like it thin so you can string stuff in there. It looks looks very cool because I use fishing wire or stretchable uh, acrylic wire. Not not say wire string. And you take the end off, or if you can slip it in there without taking the end off. And remember, we want to put this at the end of the beads. So I'm just going to slip this in here. Well, I thought I was. <laughs> See if we can do it this way. There you go. And then you take your bead, put it on the end. Now this is a little more tricky because the other ones, it didn't go all that way through and the top was butted up against the metal inside. This one, you have to figure out where the sweet spot is. Some people, when they do beads, will take their thumb and kind of curl it a little bit. You do that when you use a toothpick because it's much easier to get it to grip to the toothpick and to turn around the toothpick. This one I do just a little bit on the end. I don't want there to be too much excess paper in the middle where I can't get a string through. All right, and so you have to be very careful. You have to hold on to this one a little bit till you get it started. There you go. And again, you just keep rolling. Now this means that you've got to make sure that you're flat on this end and flat on this end. And again, this one has a crease in it. As you can see, the crease is right there. It doesn't matter. If you don't like the crease, you can cut it here and you'll have a plain bead. And then you'll slip this in. At the end, you'll have the little lady stand at the end. I don't really care about the crease. It's okay. And you just keep rolling, rolling. A little bit of glue. There you go. And again, I'm going to roll this. I'm going to kind of move this around with my finger because I don't really want too much excess glue on the end because you don't really need it because the beads, the end of the bead stops right there. So you don't really need to roll the glue around like you need to on this one because the, the end is so skinny. You need to keep rolling it around the bead till it's done. Then you really do need the glue all the way here. The end just ends abruptly, and you don't really need the glue swirling around the rest of the bead because it ends right there. Make sure you got it. Let me get the glue off my finger. Make sure you kind of roll it. Take your little bead off the end. Slide her out. And look, see what's happening here? She's The inside's going apart, so you need to take your fingernail or something and slide her off. There you go. And this wire bends easily, so be gentle with this. You can bend it, just be very careful. Put my bean there so I can find it. Now when I told you, I'm gonna put this on the on a flat surface. And I'm gonna take my finger, see how it, it came out there? Take my finger and I'm gonna mash down and it goes nicely back where it came from. So she's flat on both sides. Flat, wait, flat on this end, flat on this end. And there she is, the little lady on the end of the beads. So you have women on the end of your beads. Isn't that nice? Okay, so that's the second one. All right, so let's roll one of these others that popped off earlier. And again, there's, there's a fold right there. You see the fold? And then there's another one right here. And then that'll do it. Let me back you out just a tiny, tiny bit so you can see me roll better. All right, so I'm going to take this. Well, maybe I should do the thicker one, huh? Let me do the thicker bead. I have to find the larger hole bead in this teeny, weeny, little, bitty bag. Oh, I hope I can get it open. <clears throat> All right, is there one in there with the bigger hole? Where's the bigger hole one? I don't 
Oh, the light colored brown beads, I think, are the ones that fit this one. Oh, no, they do not. Hmm. Okay. Well, I thought I had. I must have lost the bead that goes on the end of the big one. All right, so I'll show you what to do in that case, which is nothing. <laughs> so I have bent this one, so this is not lined. See how it's not lined up properly? I have bent this one. I've used it so much that I've bent it. And it's, see how it's got that nice gap in there for me using it so often. So what I'm going to do is just slip this in here like that. I'm going to give it a little quickie curl with my fingernail. Put it down here. If you have wooden beads at home that have the circumference of this, you can slip a bead on there, but really, this one is usually made, this big one here, is made for multiple layers of paper. Just doing one on here is a little more tricky because this is supposed to be multiple layers. All right, so we're doing the graduated edges again, so you've got to kind of keep your paper in the middle. You hear that noise? That's me gripping the paper tightly. All right, this is the one where you need the glue to go all the way around because you've got thin. And I see my bead has gotten a little out of, out of whack there. There we go. And now a little dab will do us. Well, maybe if we can get it to come out, it will. There we go. Some people take a plate and have a little toothpick and a little blob of glue. I always find my glue dries up quicker than I can use it. All right, now I've got glue from almost near, butted up next to the bead to the end, and I'm just going to roll the glue in my seat, in my finger. You, can you see the glue? And I'm just going to roll it, roll it, roll it until the glue disappears, which will hold the bead perfect so it's not moving one way or the other. Looks very nice. Look at that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to take this and slip it off the end, so I think. Or not. <laughs> okay, so slipping this one off is a tad more tricky. And my bead is coming. The inside of my bead is coming through. And this is a problem. So I'm going to shove it back in there. And then I'm going to try gently to nudge the end off. There we go. I got it off. I wrecked the end of it. But again, you can take your fingers and do that. Or if you want a different shape bead, you can take the end and push the end up flat on the table. And then you've got a different shape bead. Instead of this one. You see the difference? This one's a little more pointy on the end. Yeah, a little more pointy on the end than this one is. Or a little more blunt than this one's pointy. So you've got the lady with the big head, big face. You got the whole body woman on the end there. And then the uh, strips that are graduated strips like that. Cool, huh? All right, so that was a quickie demonstration on three different kinds of rollers. Uh, my best advice to you is to buy and try lots of rollers. I know it'll get expensive, but eventually you can sell them or give them away, put them on eBay, whatever you want to do. But try li li different kinds of rollers. If you don't have any money, like I said, you can use a toothpick. I mean, I could show you how to roll with a toothpick. Here. It's way more tricky, way more tedious. All right, let's do one of these. It's a graduated bead on here. All right, so now you really got to do this to it. Take it and run your thumbnail and try to get it to curl as much as you can because it needs to grip that tooth toothpick. All right, because see, it's a little more tricky and you have to hold the end of it and kind of bend it on there. Then you need to roll with both sets of hands. 
until you can get it to roll. And it'll slide along on the toothpick because there's nothing holding it here and nothing holding it here. The only thing that's keeping it in place is you jigging it around with your fingers to make sure it rolls properly. That's why buying these is much easier to roll with than on a toothpick or as our friends across the pond say, a cocktail stick. Because this one requires both your hands rolling a small thing. Now there are people out there who make bead rollers. They're like machines and then they have electric bead rollers. Whatever, you know, floats your boat, do it. Or whatever makes your hands not hurt so badly. I don't particularly like rolling with the toothpick anymore. I did start that way and I did many, many hundreds of beads that way. All right. You don't have as much control rolling with the toothpick as you do with a bead roller. If you're going to do this often, invest in some good rollers. If you're not, then hang with the toothpicks, the knitting needles, crochet hooks, whatever is round. See, it's a little harder this way because you're having to use both your hands. It turns out the same. It's just a little harder to roll. And I have arthritis in one of my hands, so it makes it a little uncomfortable sometimes if my hand, if I do it early in the morning and I haven't had a chance to wake my hands up yet with coffee and a little bit of opening and closing exercises, it's a little tough to roll with the toothpick. So I never roll early in the morning with the toothpick. All right, and then you just take it with the glue and then you can take the toothpick and roll the glue around like I've done at the other one. So you got glue there. And eventually it'll stop rolling on the toothpick because it's just not the ideal roller. But the nice thing is, well, maybe not. <laughs> the nice thing is it usually scoots off nicely. These toothpicks have something on them that's keeping it from rolling off. So let me cut the end. Whoop, let me cut the end of this one off because it's got something sticky on the end. And then I can just take it off the toothpick. There we go. And then, of course, you kind of pat the ends. And the nice thing about a bead like this is you can make it go this way or you can make the center go this way or you can push it back in the middle again. It's a little more difficult after you play around with it to make it a perfect shaped bead again because you've changed the dynamic of the paper. There you go. Toothpick cocktail stick rolled bead. Not as easy as you would think. Okay, so that's it. I just wanted to get on and show you guys a few little bead rolling things. I'll come on another time and do some more specific beads that are specific, you know, specific shapes and give you names and that. Now I just want to do a general roll and show you the different kinds of rollers. You can use the wooden ones. You can use the ones with the finger grips, or you can get this kind where this one will do many, many layers of paper, like four or five pieces of paper in there. That's why it's bowed like that, because there's lots of paper shoved in there. I've made beads that are like really thick, like 20 or 30 pieces of paper. Um, and this one is meant to make very small, fine hold beads. And this little thing is your stopper. So there's different kinds of rollers that you can use, and there's a million on them. Go to eBay, not eBay, go to Etsy and check them out. There's lots of people who make them, and there's lots of wonderful rollers. Um, I'm thinking the cost is somewhere between $10 and $20. Sometimes you pay as much as that for one roller, depending on, you know, some of them will have big, thick grips, so you don't really have to grip hard. It'll make the roller kind of thick. I don't really want one that thick. I feel like I've lost control. Uh, but this size right here with the nice cushy end where my thumb and finger put pressure is great. All right, so that's it for now. Just thought I'd give you a very abbreviated lesson. I won't say quick because I don't think this was quick. <laughs> so there you go. All your little beads. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.